We've now completed the circular flow model by including the rest of the world, and we've seen that in the long run, purchasing power parity anchors exchange rates through trade in output markets. But in the short run, fluctuations in exchange rate arise from transactions in financial markets where those transactions can happen very quickly. Now in output markets, we've seen exports, which we'll denote by EX, and imports, which we'll denote by IM. When we subtract imports from exports, we get what we call net exports, which we denote by NX. When net exports are greater than zero, it means that exports are larger than imports, and we call that a trade surplus. When net exports are negative, it means that imports are larger than exports, and we call that a trade deficit. We can now ask what will happen to trade surpluses or trade deficits as exchange rates change. In the US we've been running a trade deficit for a very long time, so let's assume that we begin with a trade deficit, and then we see an increase in the exchange rate of the dollar, in other words, an appreciation of the dollar. Now when the dollar becomes stronger, every dollar can buy more euros than before. So when we buy goods in Europe, we can buy more goods for every dollar. In other words, imports to the US are becoming cheaper, and when imports become cheaper, the imports will increase. When we see an appreciation of the dollar, then by definition, we see a depreciation of the euro against the dollar. So for Europeans who want to buy goods in the US, they can now buy fewer dollars for every euro that they spend. So goods in the US are becoming more expensive for Europeans. Exports are becoming more expensive, which means we'll see fewer of them. So if exports fall and imports rise, that must mean that net exports fall. In other words, an increase in the exchange rate for the dollar will cause net exports to fall or trade deficits to rise. Now suppose that we saw a depreciation of the dollar, a decrease in the exchange rate of the dollar. A weaker dollar can buy fewer euros for every dollar. So when we go to purchase goods in Europe, goods in Europe are becoming more expensive for us. In other words, imports are becoming more expensive. So we'll see fewer of them. When the dollar depreciates against the euro, then by definition the euro appreciates against the dollar. A stronger euro will be able to buy more dollars for every euro. So when Europeans come to the US to buy US goods, those US goods are becoming cheaper for them. Exporting is becoming cheaper, and as exporting becomes cheaper, we'll see more exports. When we see more exports and fewer imports, that means that net exports are going to increase. So a depreciation of the dollar will cause net exports to increase. In other words, the trade deficit is going to fall. So now you may have noticed that we're using the words surplus and deficit in this lower part of the circular flow diagram, but we've also used those same words in the upper part of the circular flow diagram when we referred to budget deficits. Budget deficits are different from trade deficits. A budget deficit emerges when the government collects less in tax revenues than it spends, whereas a trade deficit happens when we import more than we export. So trade deficits and budget deficits are different things, even though they oftentimes get confused. But just because they are different doesn't mean they aren't related to one another. So before we get together in class next time, I'd like you to think about the following. What if we see an increase in the U.S. budget deficit? What do you think that will do to the U.S. trade deficit? So think about it in the following steps. We've previously thought about what an increase in the U.S. budget deficit 
will do to the real rate of interest in the US. The government will have to issue more bonds and that will have an impact on the real interest rate in the US. In the previous module, we saw if the real interest in the, rate, interest in the US goes up, that will do something to the exchange rate of the dollar. And when we see a change in the exchange rate of the dollar, we've just seen that we'll see a change in net exports. We'll see a change in the trade deficit. So by working through that chain, you could come to a conclusion about what will happen if U.S. budget deficits will increase to the trade deficit in the U.S. So give that some thought before we get together in class again, and we'll talk about it there.